Welcome back troglodytes to the Troglies Guitar Show. I was surprised by the raging success of this whole unboxing stuff. I didn't know people would be interested in it. So this is kind of going to be a new series. I'll either do like a monthly or a weekly compilation of both every guitar I unpack as well as the ones I pack. I mean this will just kind of be you know a, a chill day where I tell you the stories and the behind the scenes of these guitars. Unfortunately, due to how many guitars I go over, not every single one gets a review if I've already done a review on it. And this is one of those The Pauls that I bought recently. Uh, it was sold to me as like very good condition and what, what I got was a little bit worn. I mean, you can see you've got this area right here that's worn through, but it's a great player. A little bit frat buzzy, but I mean, that's because of these low wide frets. And this one had many replaced parts. But why I bought this one is because the ones that are usually a little bit worn, like I could see it's got the buckle rash and whatnot, they're usually excellent players. And hey, a chainsaw case, that was a good deal. So this is going to a guy who's really excited to have the Paul due to all my recommendations. So let's go ahead, I'll do this a little bit slowly so you guys can see how I'm packing guitars today. Your first step is you're going to want to take the tuners and slacken them. Not all the way, but enough that you're reducing some tension. Some people will say this is bad, but most luthiers agree that this is the best way to go. The only downside to this is sometimes you'll have to adjust the truss rod once it's been delivered. But in theory, with having less force on the neck, should it receive some trauma, it'll be less likely to crack. So after I do that, I place it over here. And this is also something else very important. Document the entire process of you boxing up your guitar and your packaging materials. Because if you ever need it for an insurance claim or something, this makes life a lot easier for you. Because you never know if the buyer is going to take very nice photos of what you are sending them. Because insurance claims they'll want to see the packaging materials. And it's always better to see them how they were initially intended. I also suggest getting a few shots of common break areas, such as the headstock area, so you can prove that it wasn't damaged before you shipped it. Something else like around the heel joint is also usually good. Now before you start packing it, on a Les Paul styled guitar, or if you just want to be safe, any style guitar, this little toggle switch cap, take it off because these things snap so often in transit and sometimes uh, I just recently had to deal with this the toggle switch got bent. Now you might say how the heck does that happen? Well when this lid is closed and it's directly against that guitar any type of good tunk is gonna cause enough of an impression that it just hits it with enough pressure that these things just break into a million pieces. So it's definitely easier just to take them off and wrap them in bubble wrap. Some people will like tape them to the outside of like a lid or something. But what I do is I take a little strip of this bubble wrap. I include a business card. So you might want to include something that has your name and address just in case worst case scenario, absolutely everything is destroyed except for the inside contents of your package. And this is the only way they can identify who it belongs to. I always then tape it shut just that way it doesn't accidentally roll out and I just place it inside of the compartment inside of the case. It's also very important to let your buyer know that it's there so I always include a little photo. The next step that I always do, uh, you don't technically have to do this if the fit is good. Once again I use this tiny little bubble wrap, I get it from 4bubble.com. It's a local place to me. And honestly, I think it's the best quality stuff as well. But I just line it like so. I double over the bottom part to kind of protect the bottom of the guitar if it's dropped. And then I place three other squares like so. So this will tighten up the fit of any case. Uh, some cases are obviously better fitting than others. This is more form fitting, so you don't technically need it. And then I take a double sheet like this, I fold it in half like so, 
and then I would say it's like a quarter to a three quarter. I double it again and use this as the neck rest. So this way your case is perfectly snug and secure. Your guitar is well protected. So with your toggle switch off now and your strings slackened, you can finally put it in the case. Now the whole purpose of this is to get the neck up off the bottom of this case. Uh, you might not be able to see it, but we now do not have any part of the headstock touching down. And that's where you get headstock breaks, is if you're not supporting the neck properly. Now the downside to hoisting up your neck here is you're putting a little bit more pressure on the frets when you're pushing down this lid. So in order to counteract that, uh, some guys, they'll take something like this. It's like a newspaper type of wrap that doesn't have any ink on it. And they'll just like put it under there. Sometimes they'll put like paper towels. What I personally like to do is I'll use up my old business cards. Because hey, <laughs> it's additional advertising as well as it identifies the package even further. Just in case those people don't look inside the case compartment if everything else was destroyed. Now the only problem with using something small like this after receiving like an occasional return or watching somebody do an unboxing video is these can become loose. I mean, I haven't had it ever scratch up a guitar badly, but I mean, they will sometimes move. So what I've recently started to do, at least for the bottom portion, is I'll take this bubble wrap and I'll just kind of secure them along the neck and I mean, I haven't had any complaints after this, so that kind of helps protect your guitar. It's definitely worth the money picking up some of the small bubble wrap, especially on non-form-fitting cases. Now, with the Gen 2 chainsaw case, you got to be careful how much packing you put in it because these latches, uh, they can be a little bit hard to latch when you've got a bunch of stuff in here. But there we go. It is perfectly secure now. We can wiggle it around. Nothing's going to happen to that guitar. So now packaging it. As you can see, I haven't really cleaned up yet. Don't worry guys, I'll clean this room up since it bothers so many of you guys. It's more utilitarian for me because I'm shipping things in and out. I can clean this, but it's just a waste of time because Anything that's on the floor is technically packing materials, which will then be used again. All right, so here I have a box. What I like to do is I take some of this large bubble wrap now. I don't use the small bubble wrap stuff for actually packing the guitars. And I'll do something like two or three wide. I'll fold it in half, and then I'll fold it in half again. So it's like you have four layers of bubble wrap. That seems to work pretty well. And here you can see it gives you a nice bottom protection there. Now you can take the strap buttons off of the guitar. And I would advise doing that if you can. But I'm always scared somebody's not going to have a screwdriver and they're going to be upset with me for doing it. So at this point, once I have the bubble wrap and everything, I fill it with whatever kind of packing materials I have on hand. Obviously, I have some new stuff, but like in this case, I'll protect it with this foam block right down there. And this isn't styrofoam, by the way. This is the really nice stuff. It doesn't splinter. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure what this is called. <laughs> As you can see, that really tightens up the fit. And that's the end goal of this, is to make sure there's no movement. Now, it's not necessarily how much packing material you use. It's more so how you use it. If you just shove a bunch of bubble wrap in here like this, it doesn't even do anything. That's why I think wrapping the cases in bubble wrap is a complete waste of time. What you want to do is get the bubble wrap under pressure, roll it up such as this, and bend it in like that. 
And now it's doing a whole lot more than just being thrown in there. And I've never had a guitar actually get a headstock break, except for once when it was already repaired. Well, I guess twice by doing a method like this. You're gonna wanna bow your box a little bit. Cause now, look at this box. It used to be like the walls would be right here, ready for impact, but now you've got protection on all sides of the case. And I can shake this thing pretty darn good, and it's not gonna have any large impacts. I have no problem punching this thing, and as you can see, no movement. This is secured. Now technically, I don't have to fill this with anything else. Sometimes I still will just for the looks of it though. But the final step here is to give some protection to the top of the case. I usually fold it in half, do that again. And then this is what you're left with. Now this box is a little bit small, as you can see, but we will take care of that in a minute. But for now, let's tape it up. So as you can tell, I don't skimp on tape. Tape is ridiculously cheap. So I use way too much of it. From here, I like to use this fragile tape. It's more so just a cosmetic thing. I don't think shippers actually listen to you when you say something's fragile. But it gives the buyer peace of mind and looks better on your part for an insurance claim. And then just for the buyer and maybe the end deliverer, I like to put which way's the top. And I'll put little arrows on the box. Most times these things will travel any way that's easiest for, you know, UPS or USPS. So the arrows aren't necessarily doing anything. And then I'll always flip it around and do the same thing to the bottom because as you can tell, this one definitely needs some reinforcement. And then if I see any areas that are kind of damaged a little bit, because I do reuse packing materials, I'm sure it would be more professional if I used all new. And as you can see, I do have some new boxes should I ever need them. But I find that reusing this stuff, well, A, it saves money, and B, you're not, you know, polluting the world with new material every day. <laughs> and then the next thing you want to check after looking for deficiencies in the box is you want to see if there's any old labels on it. Like, for example, this isn't like a shipping label, but it is like an inventory label of whatever this guitar initially was. And you'll either want to scribble it out or try to remove it if possible. This one looks like it's going to be a scribble job because sometimes things happen where these old barcodes will get scanned and it'll confuse the UPS system or the definitely the post office's system. So just scribble them out nice and good. I mean, technically all you need to void a barcode is just one thick black strip down the center. And then what I'll do later once I print my shipping labels is I have these stick on ones and I'll just cover that over. So now despite this box starting like this, I mean, it wasn't the best box in the world. It's pretty flimsy, it's been used, it's been worn down. It's nice and secure. It's gonna do the job great. You don't have to do this part. It's just mainly cosmetic again. And I suggest getting a good scale. I mean, I think this thing was like 40 bucks, but it's so worth it. 
because if you get an inaccurate weight for like USPS, they'll charge you a bunch more. So this one appears to be 21 pounds, 14 ounces. Now, if you're shipping UPS or FedEx, they just round it up to 22, even if it's only like 21 and one ounce. That's just how it goes. Then you measure it. And it's not this 17. You've got to account for this little hump that we have. So it's really closer to 18. And at the widest part here, it's 10. So 18, 10, and it goes all the way up to 44. And I always just mark it on the box just like that. Now it's very important, if you're selling multiple guitars, do not pack them all at the same time. You might think, oh, I'm not a dumbo, I won't mix up shipping labels, but then you will, and you will have the biggest headache on your hand. Because if you accidentally ship a custom shop guitar to a guy who bought a studio, do you think you're ever gonna see that guitar again? No. <laughs> That actually happened once. Uh, luckily, both buyers were good and both guitars were about the same value. It was a, uh, a 74 Flying V and I think some Les Paul, but the big kicker was that 74 Flying V was going back to the original owner. Okay, so from here, this was a reverb sale. We're going to Columbus, Ohio, so we're gonna get the shipping label from here. So we'll enter in our dimensions of 44, 18, and uh, 10. I suggest getting the reverb shipping protection. I mean, it seems to pay out whenever you have an issue. And that's 18 bucks for peace of mind plus signature required. So that's an extra 20 bucks. And surprisingly, UPS is actually the cheapest route and it will be a free overnight shipping due to where it's going. So definitely a good deal there. And then after that, my GoPro just crapped out. It overheats. I'm not sure what's wrong with it. I bought it brand new. I'm very dissatisfied with it to say the least. And that's the highest end model, the Hero 7. But the next guitar I packed up was the Les Paul Florentine that I did a review on. Very excellent guitar. Apparently I strung the Bigsby up wrong. Eh, my bad. <laughs> but this is going to a guy. It's his first Bigsby guitar. He's super excited to get to try it out. He's either going to love the Bigsby or hate it. But if you're going to try a Bigsby, I don't think there would be a better one to try it. Because this had stock locking tuners and the stock roller bridge. So it should be a very smooth ride for him. The next guitar was the Black Les Paul Goddess that I think we reviewed a couple of weeks ago. This is probably the cheapest I've ever sold the Goddess for, and it was a fantastic deal for him, so I hope he enjoys this guitar, because it took me a long time to find the black finish. But here's a really good representation of all the photos I take while I do this packing process. Once again, I use those three little cards and I document, you know, all of those little nitpicky details just in case we need them. Because it always seems like if I forget to take the pictures or I'm in a big rush, that's when I need them the most. Now you can see with this package, I did use packing peanuts, but I never fill it all the way to the top because that's just rude. I always top it off with the bubble wrap. That way it's easier for them to remove it without getting the peanuts everywhere. So that's the four guitars we packed up today. We had the Florentine, the Les Paul Goddess, as well as the Paul. And the other package there is the Gary Clark Jr. that is being sent back because <laughs> it had more issues than I thought it did. All right, thank you Troglodytes for watching. Let me know if you like this style of video. Maybe you guys just want to see the unboxing and not necessarily the packing of the guitars. We're just exploring new territory here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.